Almost all cross-testing to kill or pacify SCP-682 had failed miserably. If you haven't seen it, go watch our video on the legendary hard-to-kill reptile to see just how powerful and terrifying this creature is. It faced the Gate Guardian, an SCP with a flaming sword hotter than the sun, capable of tearing your atoms to shreds, and came out fine. In its face-off with the horrifying SCP-096, also known as the Shy Guy, it broke the Shy Guy's mind and reduced it to gibbering despair. Even SCPs with supposedly unlimited powers simply refused to engage the beast in combat. So, when it was proposed that they test 682 with SCP-999, a creature known among Foundation staff as the Tickle Monster, the idea was considered laughable. 682 had been burned, suffocated, cut up, incinerated, and growled in the faces of the gods. How could this so-called Tickle Monster ever hope to survive an encounter, let alone win a fight? Some even believe that this was the last we'd see of SCP-999. But what makes this story truly remarkable is that that isn't how this played out. As you'll soon discover, SCP-999 is an amazing and unique SCP in and of itself. But its secret origins and its interactions with some other prominent figures in the SCP universe are what make this humble, slimy creature beyond extraordinary. Prepare yourself for the heartwarming, yes, you heard that right, the heartwarming story of SCP-999. Several highly trained agents on 682 detail place 999 into the immortal lizard cell. Compared to the giant reptilian sitting across from it, 999 wasn't much to look at. It's a large orange amorphous blob of anomalous slime. Weighing in at around 120 pounds, SCP-999 was nothing compared to the monstrosity it was supposed to face. While its weight has, in the past, caused minor injuries to some of its human handlers, it has never caused serious or long-lasting damage of any kind to a living thing. Even its diet consists only of candy and sweets, with a particular preference for M&Ms and Necco wafers. It consumes these treats through the cell membrane of its slimy body, much like an amoeba. This extremely stretchy membrane means the creature is highly malleable, including the ability to stretch and flatten itself out to a mere 2 centimeters thick. At rest, the creature takes a dome-like shape around 2 meters wide and 1 meter in height. The closest things the creature has to limbs are prehensile pseudopods. Those are the arm-like projections normally seen on single-celled organisms, of which it has at least three. The more you hear about this utterly harmless creature, the more that matching it up with the pure embodiment of absolute hatred known as SCP-682 feels downright cruel. In absolute contrast to the misanthropic attitudes of the reptile, 999 loves humans. It has a playful dog-like attitude. Much like an overexcited puppy when approached, 999 will react with extreme joy and slither towards the nearest person in order to interact. It will leap onto them, using two of its three prehensile pseudopods to hug the person, while the third nuzzles the person's face, emitting high-pitched cooing and gurgling noises throughout. The creature is apparently pleasant in every conceivable fashion, as even its odor has been reported to smell just like the favorite scent of whoever is smelling it. Examples have included chocolate, fresh laundry, bacon, roses, and Play-Doh. It's almost impossible to oversell just how beloved and benevolent this strange creature is. It's one of the rare sapient SCPs to earn the safe class, and it's allowed to roam freely around its facility at all times, apart from a one-hour bedtime period between 8 and 9 p.m. In the rare instances that 999 has caused harm to a worker at the facility, it immediately began to back away and contract its body while whimpering in a kind of dog-like apology. The closest the Foundation has ever come to having a real incident with the creature was the time someone accidentally fed it a can of caffeinated cola, causing it to become hyper for an hour before becoming visibly queasy. You'll be relieved to know that it's since made a full recovery. But what would happen when this whimsical creature is forced to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Foundation's most ill-tempered monster? The employees observing the test watched in suspense as 999 began to enthusiastically slither towards 682. It's no surprise that after being tortured and almost killed hundreds of times during testing, 682 had grown jaded to the cross-tests it was regularly subjected to. When it saw this strange orange blob squelching across the ground towards it, it sighed and groaned, expecting the worst. What is that? the creature asked of its gelatinous guest. SCP-999 began jumping up and down in front of 682 like an excited puppy, creating a high-pitched squealing noise. Just as it regarded all living things, 682 thought the creature bouncing around before it was disgusting and hardly worth the effort to destroy. 
Was the Foundation even trying anymore? With a single vicious stomp, 682 flattened the friendly creature beneath one of its feet. Observers were prepared to charge in and liberate 999 from under 682's claws. But then something truly unexpected happened. The expression on 682's acid-eaten face began to slowly change. It was beginning to smile. Observers recorded a noise what they thought could have been a chuckle, as the creature growled and said, Hmm, what is this? I feel good. While the observers looked on, stunned at what was happening, 999 began to slither and crawl up from between 682's toes. It reformed on its scaly leg and slithered up along its side until it reached the neck. There, it began to nuzzle like it had never nuzzled before. The results spoke for themselves. 682 was grinning and chuckling, repeating a phrase that the Foundation never would have imagined coming from 682. Feel so happy. 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 Just when you thought SCP-999 couldn't possibly be more adorable, you learn about its greatest power, bringing joy. Anyone and anything that comes into contact with the creature, even in passing, will experience a kind of mild euphoria. As one's contact with the creature is prolonged, this overwhelming sense of joy increases and continues long after you've separated from it. Prolonged contact has completely cured depression, anxiety, and PTSD, along with a number of other conditions, including rage and antisocial personality disorders. Serial killers practically become saints after coming into prolonged contact with 999, and in that moment, 682 was no exception. And there truly does not appear to be no exceptions. While causing happiness and joy isn't a dangerous weapon, when it comes to SCP-999, it is an extremely powerful one. And what's more, SCP-999 also appears to have an innate sense for those who need its help most, with a particular affection for the hurt and the unhappy. The creature appears to be a true altruist on a fundamental level, even risking its own safety to help humans during dangerous containment breaches. In one dramatic instance, 999 leaped into the air to block a bullet from making contact with a member of staff. As a result, the creature is pretty much universally loved by all members of Foundation staff. It's the one SCP who has never made trouble for anyone. Back in SCP-682's containment cell, the beast was still smiling and laughing as 999 rubbed against its neck. It was an event so strange, so unprecedented, that the observers in attendance felt like they were hallucinating. For a few minutes, the monster kept dreamily repeating the word, happy. But then, suddenly, the creature began to enter a fit of uncontrollable, booming laughter. It rolled onto its back, slamming its huge tail against the door. It had just fallen victim to one of 999's favorite pastimes, tickle fights, hence how it earned its Tickle Monster nickname among staff. The tickle fight continued until 682 appeared to tire and fall asleep, with a smile still on its face. After 15 minutes of inactivity, two D-Class personnel were commanded to enter and retrieve SCP-999 from the containment cell. They did so successfully, but as soon as 999 was removed, 682 roused from its slumber and released a powerful psychic attack from its entire body while laughing maniacally. It rendered all personnel within a certain distance incapacitated as they collapsed in fits of laughter, allowing 682 to escape and go on a violent rampage. However, in spite of this, 999 showed no fear and helped save some of the bystanders as security officers subdued and recaptured 682. And even after all of this, 999 showed no hard feelings towards 682 and indicated a desire to play again. It's a creature whose capacity for love is so limitless that it's practically immune to fear. Which is all well and good, because the true enemy that 999 is destined to face is infinitely more powerful and terrifying than 682 could ever hope to be. What is this monster, and why should 999 have to face it someday? The answers to these questions all lie in the true origins of SCP-999, available only to those with level 5 clearance and beyond. It's a perfect example of how something good can come from the darkest places. There would be no SCP-999 without SCP-231-7. SCP-231 was a collection of seven girls, all impregnated by horrific nightmares in a ritual performed by a cult known as the Children of the Scarlet King. Each of these girls, over the years that followed, gave birth to some of the most horrific monsters imaginable. One of which, according to some, was SCP-682. 
These beings were manifested by the Scarlet King, a powerful interdimensional nightmare god believed to be behind a great deal of the darkness and horror present within our and many other dimensions. Foundation higher-ups have declared the Scarlet King to be the greatest existing threat to the multiverse at large. And SCP-231 was his latest direct interaction with our universe. The only surviving member of SCP-231, SCP-231-7, gave birth in secret. But she didn't give birth to a monster. She gave birth to SCP-999, a being of pure goodness. That's right. The nicest, kindest, cuddliest SCP of all is the direct descendant of a being that's essentially the dark god of all evil. Feel free to take a moment to absorb that. The creature even healed the girl who birthed it and allowed her to return to normal life with her family once more. From its first moments, SCP-999 was making positive changes to the world around it. And according to ancient texts from a Scarlet King-aligned culture known as the Deivas, SCP-999 is still very much in its infancy, yet it already has the power to pacify its monstrous siblings like the aforementioned 682. It's believed, according to some prophecies and Foundation theories, that the power of SCP-999 will grow exponentially as it matures. Why does this matter? Well, it's believed by some that one day, 999 will grow powerful enough to overthrow not only its own monstrous siblings, but the thought-to-be unstoppable Scarlet King himself. Not through violence or hate, but through the pure force of happiness and love burning out the darkness and purifying the corrupted. While the humble SCP-999 rarely outshines its frightening competitors, to those truly in the know, 999 is one of the most powerful and valuable SCPs in existence, and may be the greatest asset in the Foundation's arsenal for the war against dangerous anomalous activity. After all, what could strike more fear into their hearts than the knowledge that it might be love rather than firepower that finally dethrones the Scarlet King? and for the knowledge that it may one day save everything we know from a fate so much worse than death, with nothing but affection for everyone and everything, it's worth offering thanks to the little orange blob, or at least an extra pack of M&Ms before bedtime. <laughs>